OK 嘛。Happy Wednesday! Happy Wednesday, guys! Welcome back. You already know what to do. Show us those likes. Subscribe to our channel and follow us on Instagram and TikTok. We're gonna keep it light. We're gonna keep it short. We have a fantastic topic today. A lot of people have asked us about this, and you and I have personally experienced this. A hundred percent. So we are here to talk about all things mom judgment. Mom shaming. Mm. Mom trolling. Judgy moms. Guilty moms. The helicopter mamas. Not guilty moms. I know guilty better moms. The Karen moms. Your, why is your child having a tantrum mom? But why did you even have a child mom? You didn't sleep train your mo- your kid mom? I don't have any other mom. mom. Oh. <laughs> You're, that's not organic mom? Ooh, that, I had that one written down. Yo. That one I had written down. Yeah, Yo. yeah. The, I'm, you're, not, you're not getting your groceries from Whole Foods mom? Ooh. How dare you? How dare you? That's what we're talking about today, guys. All right. It's going to be a juicy one. So... What is your experience with this? Do you have personal experience I, with this? I have the story, okay? I need to I hear it. I have the story, I okay? hear it. I have the story about a moment in time when the mom shaming slip slapped me up and I was not ready. I was not ready for okay, it. Okay, baby one or baby two? Baby one. Of course. Because baby be. two, it's like you develop a little bit of like, Thick come skin. at me. Yeah. Come at me. Say what you got to say. Yeah. Come at me. Yeah. But baby number one, you're new. Everything is fresh. Tell us everything. Okay. Okay. So this is what happened with Paint me. The picture, girl. <clears throat> this is a little bit of like a social media thing too. Okay. So <clears throat> I had Emma. She was maybe like three, four months. Four months, I would say. Okay. okay. And I posted this picture of her on my Instagram okay. where she was sitting in a car seat. And the backstory behind this was that I had taken her to my aunt's house okay. for lunch. And I had taken her out of the car and I was about to take her out. But I was like, oh, she looks so cute with her little sunglasses on. Let me take a picture. You know how we do. Okay. Mm. So I posted this picture on my Instagram and I tagged Pottery Barn. Okay. okay? Pottery Barn Kids. And Pottery Barn Kids was a real one. And they said, oh, let's repost her picture. So Ooh. they reposted my picture. Nice. Y'all. A girl was like, oh my God, Pottery Barn reposted my picture. This is great. This is great. Until, until the mom trolls came at me hard. Oh, okay. No. And oh, they no. said, hold on one second. <laughs> We've analyzed this picture and it seems as though the seatbelt buckle on your child is too low and it should not be too low okay how dare you i swear to god when i say guys <laughs> when i say hundreds and hundreds of comments no. hundreds and hundreds i'm not lying okay the hate wow what a like what a horrible mom this mom this mom doesn't even know how to take care of her kids her child could potentially die does she not know this is a safety hazard pottery barn why are you posting this picture it's against safety guidelines wow the way they slammed me girl and at this point i had never received hate like this in oh, my life oh man so, girl you know what it's, it's about you is different it's mm-hmm. about your parenting as you like I was just like, oh my God, oh my God. So I actually went on and I was like, let me clarify real quick. Mm-hmm. Guys, like, hey, uh, I was just about to take my baby out of yeah. the car seat. I'm at my aunt's house. You can see that it's not in a car. Yeah. She's literally sitting in her car seat with her little sunglasses on looking all cute. And I'm about to take her out. And then there was like a couple moms that were like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I said that. I oh. sound so judgy. Yeah. But some of them didn't even bother reading my comment. Yeah, they wouldn't. And they just kept on annihilating me. And then Pottery Barn messaged me no. and is like, I swear to God, they were like, <clears throat> we're so sorry for the hate that you're getting. Oh. They were so nice about oh, it. That's nice. Um, but we're going to have to remove the picture. And I was just like, that. it's of PR. They say that. Marketing. They can't post things like that. So I was like, it's all good. Go ahead. Like, I don't want to deal with this anyway. Yeah. Um, but they removed it. And that was my uh, my first moment of like, major mom shame on an online you know what i have to say though in this example this is like an exponential version of mom shaming right yeah because this is going like international it social media national okay? yo it's it not was, like it, one she's, auntie said she's internationally a bad mom <laughs> she's not even a local bad mom she's an international bad mom <laughs> it was wild Arush. that's crazy it was wild and then I saw all of these other actors and actresses. Like, I think there was a time when, like, Chrissy Teigen posted a picture of her daughter and, like, her belt buckle was, like, a little bit. And I'm sitting there, like, do you have nothing better to do than to analyze and, like, take out your little inchy tape and, like, measure where the belt buckle should be? Like, it bothers me. It is an inchy tape. Okay, if you call it an inch tape, don't start with me. It's an inchy tape. It's totally an inchy tape. It is an inchy tape. Like, and it's not even a tape. It's an inchy tape. Inchy tape. 
Where's the inchi? Inchi tape le ho. Yeah, 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 yeah. Literally, okay? Lo, but what? Kameez ka, kameez ka karu. Isko kya kete? Tira. Tira. I love that you know that. Eh? I, I know love that. that you know that. Well, you know it because your mom sells all your clothes. Absolutely, so. absolutely. Um, but yeah, girl, like people are wild. People are wild. Well, yeah, they are. Do you have an experience? A girl. How the many? The list is endless. How many? The list is endless. <laughs> I will say, I think my greatest mom shaming, mom judgment moment is always that I have my kids in daycare. What? Honestly, a lot of people have a problem with it. I don't know why, but a lot of people are like, oh, I guess it's just your circumstances because you have to work. And it's what? like, I'm choosing to work. Yo, but like, look at the economy right now. Yeah. Let's be real for a second. Like, but also like, I'd like to work. And and yeah, people, people, school, I have people genuinely enjoy working. Like you want to do something yeah. with your life. What's wrong with that? And I remember in my like five or six months of mat leave, I felt like I was in this like hamster wheel. Yeah. And I was doing the exact same thing over and over mm -hmm. and over again. And you get so exhausted, right? It and is at a lot. one point, my kid, this is only when I had Ibrahim. Yeah. I just knew that he he was bored. Yeah. He didn't want to be around me. He didn't want to be around his grandparents. Yeah. Even when I would have cute activities set up. And mind you, like the ECE and me kicked in too. And I was mm -hmm. like, we're going to do this sand yeah. play and this water play and this all. You know, we we did all of that. Yeah. But I just knew that it wasn't enough and the structure at home just, he was ready for more. Yeah, and, and they need social interaction too, right? Yeah. Like I, I feel like they thrive they with do. having friends and doing other things. Yeah, and at one point I kept, I've kept all of my kids at home until they're two years old and yeah. then I send them yeah. to daycare, Good right? for you, yeah. So I've always split it where once my mat leave was done, um, either my, like my mom usually has mm -hmm. taken care of the kids. Yeah. And I remember in between it was COVID, so I was working from home. Yeah. So I could still yeah. teach from home and have the kids exactly. home. Exactly. But, and then in, in between, I had my mat leave. So I was actually home for like the next set of years yeah. or whatever. But I don't, it, there's something about working moms, and we're going to get into this. Yeah. About working moms and how there is so much judgment around it. And yeah. if you are not a working mom and you're a stay at home mom in the beginning few years of your kids' lives, yeah. it's like, wow, you're doing so good. And you're dedicating yeah. your whole life to them. And if you're working, there's just so, such a big judgment piece on like, yeah, but you're just gonna let them like roll in daycare. Yeah, you know what I mean. You know I they say that? that. I think that comes from the perspective of like our older generation that didn't work. Like, yeah, our parents were not working moms. They were not. You know what I mean? And yeah. they just they were just like we're gonna take care of the kids at home, and that's what they did. Yeah. And so now when they see us putting our kids in school, it's like. But why? Like, yeah. why do you need to have a job when you can just sit at home and take care of your kids? Yeah. But why can't you do both? Exactly. Right? And you know what's funny? In the beginning, um, my mom was a bit like, you know, why are you putting them? They get yeah. so sick in daycare. Yeah. They're not going to get the same love and care and attention. But yeah. you know what people need to understand? This is very important. Yeah. Your child is going to receive care from important adults in their life in a different way. Yes. Okay? The way you care for your kids is yeah. different than the way your parents are going to care. Yep. It's different from daycare. <laughs> yeah, it's I different agree. from teachers. It's different from your neighbor, for example. Totally. Okay? It's different from aunts, uncles, chachus, mamus, mm -hmm. whoever. Mm -hmm. Right? So at the end of the day, I am also just building a skill set for my kids and allowing them to understand care from a daycare yeah. caregiver's perspective. And I think it's important for them to experience that. It is. Like imagine they're just around the same people their whole life. And then you like when they go to school, it's like a very big transition. It is. Right. And even putting them in daycare, don't get me wrong. It's hard. It's rough. Are we going to talk God. about this? Girl, my son still cries yo, every morning. Yo, my four-year-old sometimes will be like, Mama, I don't want to go. Don't leave me. <laughs> but sometimes I feel like he does it. Now I think he does it where it's like, I just want to put on a little bit of a show for oh, you. Because I swear to God, as soon as it's like, see you later, this boy's fine. They're fine. Completely, Completely fine. Completely fine. And yeah. I know this because I'll drop my eldest. Yeah. And then because the daycare he, he's in also has a Montessori kindergarten yeah, yeah, program. Yeah, yeah. So both of mine go in the same place. Yeah. So I'll drop him. He does this whole show and he'll cry. Mama, don't go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> drop him off. Then I go to the next classroom and drop off Idris. Yeah. And I can hear all of that has stopped. And he's totally fine. He's totally fine. He's like, oh, guess they what? do that Spider-Man bo water bottle. That, like, <laughs> I was like, kid, you're dumb. Okay? Yeah, that is so <laughs> true. That is so, so true. My son is the same. And he has been doing this to the point where his teachers are like, we're telling you that he is so fine that it's you could never even believe how fine he is and i'm like listen i believe yeah. you 
I'm not even doubting what you say. Like, I believe you. <laughs> One day you need to drop him off and just move a few steps away and from the door see, and just stand right? there. He's gonna, you're immediately- I already know, girl. Yeah. I already <laughs> know. But you want to know something? You know what I noticed? One of the main reasons why, oh, so so with my daughter, I didn't send, send her to Montessori mm -hmm. or anything, right? But with my son, I was like, no, I need to like, do something with my life mm. like this is just a lot the other reason i sent him was because i felt like he wasn't talking mm. and so and he's a covid baby and mm. so i was like i just i would like i took him out to a speech therapist and i was like okay you know what like what is it like is it a speech delay like what's going on and she was like no he's he's fine it's mm. just like some kids are like that and he's a covid baby and all this stuff and so i i was like okay i'm gonna put him in in like a montessori mm -hmm. or a nursery or whatever daycare and i have noticed the biggest difference mm -hmm. in him. I cannot even explain it. I love that. And when I tell you, I would sit with him daily, do all of these like activities. I followed all these speech therapists mm -hmm. online. Like, how do you help your child? And you know what? It's, it is easy to say that like, yeah, you do what you can. Yeah. But they need other teachers yes. or like kids that they can play with and interact with. Yeah. And at home, he was just with me. Exactly. Like even his sister's in school. He's yeah. just rolling with me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm like trying to make my like hondi and like, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? It's just not like that. Yeah. And so he's like, you know, like his teacher was blippy and yeah. like Miss Rachel. Yeah. Know? And yeah, so I'm yeah. like, no, like I can give him time, but like I also have things to do at home too. Yeah. Right. And also what's really important is the meaningful interactions that toddlers have with other toddlers. Absolutely. It is so important for the, yeah. their well being, their growth, their yeah. development, all of that. Yeah. Exactly. Because now you are giving, you are now encompassing a whole set of growth and skills that he is only going to learn from other kids. Absolutely. And mind you, sometimes they come home learning behaviors that you may not be proud Absolutely. of. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And my yeah. kids have tantrums and meltdowns, and I literally can go and pick them up yeah. and know which kid they picked it up. Right. From. But it's right. all good because yeah. when they come home, they also you just keep enforcing that. Listen, maybe you learn this from somewhere else, but in this home, we're going to do it. This Absolutely. Way. Use your words. Do this. Do yeah. that. Have your own. However you Method, want. Yeah. yeah. You know, your thought that you yeah. teach them that. Yeah, okay? exactly. And just know they will pick up habits and language and certain things from other kids. Fine. It's also for their growth yeah. and development. And then they're going to come home and realize, you know what? Other kids do that. Yeah, But exactly. in my home with my parents, these are going to be my morals and values. And that what I'm doesn't gonna... fly at home. Don't think that you can say what you want to say at home. Don't you dare call me by my name. Right? Ooh. It's mama forever. Right? Yeah. Don't call me a rouge. I, so, I, would, I, I would be like, what did you say? <laughs> Yo, like, I'd, I'd, be like, gonna... I'd be like, your baba doesn't call me by my name. Don't Yo. you dare call me by my name. <laughs> put that respect on my name put that respect on my name okay <laughs> don't you dare okay i find it really weird when i find it weird their parents by their names that's odd to me like don't do that weird when like your kids have friends and then like in some movies it'll be like they'll be like oh hi mr johnson and he's like call me dan what <laughs> you know what i always found weird when you were like transitioning into like college and there was no like mister it was always just like you can call me jack yeah. and i'm just like nah i can't no i can't you're mr jack to me yeah like, yeah even my daughter like she has some friends and their moms are like no you can just call me by my first name and i'm like absolutely not nope. we're gonna add a little bit of respect with the miss mrs Facts. Ms. we're gonna do that we we are gonna do that i i don't like that yeah. i just feel like you have to have a little bit like that's just how we've been raised, yo. Okay, we gotta talk about a topic. I can't. I love you know how my mind works. randomly these just come up. Okay, what are we gonna do in our generation? Okay, yeah, our generation of women who have kids. Yeah, how are we addressing? Because growing up, all everybody that was my mom's friend was an auntie or an uncle. Okay, yeah. okay, but what do we do with our generation? Okay, okay. So for me it's hard because you also everyone is not an auntie or an uncle you know what i'm saying like yeah. an auntie or an uncle in, in in the actual terms of auntie or uncle it's like this person is related by blood to me yeah. in some way right yes but i have to say like when it comes to my friends yeah you or like any of my other friends i always say like oh um i'm going to aruj khala's house i say i always too. say that because i feel like it's easy for them to understand it yes but um if it, it's a random person i think i might still say like uncle what else do i say so i so this is the, what i had to learn yeah all of my close friends are khalas yeah yeah, okay? yeah 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 but it's weird because then all of like farhan's friends are like 
Chacho, Chachos, yeah, because yeah, they're yeah. the youngest, and he would be like the brother. You know what I mean? Yeah, I which get is that. confusing. But I think when my kids are older, I'm gonna have to maybe explain the but relationship. But they start to understand that, they like do. that's not how it is. Yeah, you know what I mean? Right. Um, but now that I have like other friends that I'm not so close with, but yeah. sometimes we meet here and there, like a big gathering, or whatever. I will say like, that's like so and so auntie. Yeah, that's yeah, so yeah. and so uncle. Yeah. So I, like, I just don't know any other way of saying it without like them just being like oh this is this is like faiza yeah hi like i don't want them to no, say it has that because it's like yo that person's like <laughs> like 20 years older than you are right? or like 35 years older yeah we you. apologize if you get offended Fiza. yeah uh, sorry but Fiza. we're putting respect <laughs> on your name <laughs> but that's my point like i think i would always say as a, as like the close people to me are like baji okay mm -hmm. and like if, if i have close guys or whatever which you know you know someone like a family friend or whatever it would be like mamu yeah right? but then that's like we cap it we cap it at that but if you're extended you're an auntie and uncle i'm sorry yeah. i know none of us want to be but people be calling me auntie i don't want to be an auntie yeah. but i am okay Listen, okay mom just set the rules for everyone okay, okay auntie okay you know, auntie know it is. <laughs> god damn i can't believe we're at that phase right yeah. now we're like now we're aunties yo why and i remember one time i went out and somebody told their child that i'm aruj auntie and i was like mm. like don't you dare like how dare you i'm baji <laughs> <laughs> but now i'm like i mean i like, get I it i get why you said that i'm I sorry auntie. that i was offended there there's me being a judgy mom yo okay but everybody does it yeah. in in some way shape sense or form we all do it yeah it, you're Let's right you're right you know what i mean yeah but i do think that there's some there's some moments where it's like okay we'll allow the judgment like yeah. if you're gonna slap your kid up in public you deserve to be judged mm. okay mm. y'all need to do that stuff behind closed doors <laughs> <laughs> you know the chitter chitter do it, okay <laughs> y'all need to do that behind if it's happening but you know that stuff is not good so like if you're still gonna do it and follow the footsteps of our forebears <laughs> then, then do it behind closed doors at least at least give them a little bit of res <laughs> respect okay not in the walmart toy aisle come on <laughs> okay like y'all need to <laughs> your restrain just yourself walk that Paw Patrol, okay? restrain yourself <laughs> yo by the way random thought. <laughs> random, random thought going off on a tangent here okay you know when you like take your kid to the store and they're like mommy i want this <laughs> yeah <clears throat> so i read this thing once and they're like listen when your kid pulls that shit okay pull that all the oh, time all the time and then you're just like i'm not getting you this stupid <laughs> freaking truck okay like just stop so now what i do is I take pictures of the item. Okay. And then I say, oh, we took a picture. Let's look at how we can. Ooh. I'm telling you it works. Stop. I'm going to use that It time. actually works. Okay. So once I took my daughter to like H&M and she wanted this like, it was hideous, guys. Oh, I'm going to throw it out there. It was hideous. But we allow her to love what she loves. Okay. Get, so like, love what you love, girly. Okay. <laughs> so she wanted this like unicorn, like every colors on it, yeah. like tool dress. I was like, all right, sis, you like it. Um, that's great. She's like, like, please, 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 mommy. <laughs> and then I'm like, all right, we're going to take a picture with it. Okay. We're going to take a picture with it because it's so beautiful. And I literally took a, I was like, Emma, take a picture of me. Didn't even take a picture of the whole dress. She took a picture of the dress and me yeah. <laughs> with like my guilty face on like here. This is a dress that I'm never going to get you. But sure, I'll give you a picture. <laughs> it was one of those moments. Okay. And she was fine after. Yeah. Like she was fine with it. So that's just a little tippy tip that I wanted to throw. Yeah, I like this tip. I need to do it. It's actually a good idea. Tell me if it works for you. I am. I am. Sometimes it. it doesn't because they just need that material item in their hands honestly but. so i'm starting to do other things like sometimes when they're like mama can we go to dollarama because they just like like going there and like yeah, looking at all the toys or whatever yeah. and it's like dollarama is not a dollar anymore <laughs> it's like six it's bucks like for a truck. bucks God, yeah i don't want like i will rather just get you a better quality at absolutely toys, you know what I mean? absolutely but like so now i'm doing this thing where i'm like you know what how about we if i if you want to go to dollarama you can pick stickers oh i love that so i'm trying to change the item so that it's not always toys you I know that and like sometimes randomly i'll be like oh let's go to dollar where you guys can get socks oh <laughs> then they're probably like yeah yes they do i think it's just the the experience of wanting to go out and, and get, get something, something. Yeah, yeah, what, yeah, yeah yeah that's what it generally tends to be yeah here and there obviously like i like when it's their birthdays or whatever we'll totally. do all Mark toys Ross, and i'll be like you guys get to pick one thing yeah yeah, and yeah, even yeah then, same. i'm trying to teach them now about like a little bit about like money management so i'll be like listen totally. look at how much this is this is yeah. too much yeah you are gonna get this much find a toy in this Absolutely. in this price range that's very smart i feel like i do the same thing with my daughter too where i'm like 
first of all like money doesn't grow on trees mm. so you need to learn this early mm. and so what i do is like i have a chore chart and if mm. she completes like chores like for a week then she gets like two dollars at the Ooh, end of the week or something like that okay? i love that does she complete the chores for the whole week no she does not so really mama like, hina does i'm making more money than she is but you know what, I, you know what i'm saying like, you know what I'm rain saying? in girl absolutely but like it's it's an incentive and i love that you do that that whole thing where you say hey like this is your budget yeah find it within the budget exactly because then they they do look for it and then they do realize that like hey everything is not for free you know yes and it's also like being mindful of like not just buying them whatever they want honestly because that happens so much and you know what i hate when you have random toys thrown around that they play with for five minutes and then they're done with it mm -hmm. and they never look at that thing again mm -hmm. and you're just like why did they spend money on this yeah. so and useless it's like, toys are expensive we talked about this the yeah. toy industry is a freaking sham <clears throat> it's a sham okay but we, you gotta do what you gotta do because kids gotta are, do. it's all around and yeah. they just want it and it uh -huh. gives them that little, whatever little bit of joy okay but you're spending like 29 39 49 dollars yeah. on a toy that they just throw around or break yeah when they break it i get so upset oh my god me too me and too. what I, what else i'm starting to do another tip is like the minute they get one new toy and let's say it's like a really big fire truck, yeah okay their rule is they now have to go back into their basket of big trucks and they have to donate i love that. so we recently got them because their birthdays were here so yeah. we got them big fire engines yeah. from walmart they yeah. loved it they picked it out it was within their budget cool we came back home yeah. we went through their big thing and they threw away like three or four of the really big like transport trucks yeah or whatever, yeah and we donated them i think that's a fabulous yeah idea. but now they're so jalak. <laughs> now they're like, oh, mama, can we get a new toy? We'll donate the old oh ones. Oh my gosh. Shut the hell up and sit down. <laughs> they are so smart, these kids. Yo, I can't. They're so damn smart. I can't keep up with it. I can't keep up with it, too. Every time I think I have it unlocked, we, we never, never have no it, one has it unlocked. Unlock. No one has it unlocked. Unlock. And this is exactly the point. This comes right back to the topic where it's like, no mom has it unlocked. Mm -hmm. But damn the way these judgy moms judge you pretending like they got it on lock mm. so like let's throw our judgment out to y'all real quick mm. that's the shit that triggers me so i have a scenario okay okay go this is a real scenario okay what do you do when you have a friend who has a kid mm -hmm. and they literally only boast about their postpartum oh, jo journey their God. own and their kids <laughs> like that postpartum journey that one year that they're on mat leave all they do is like boast in about, a good way yeah like oh i didn't have any trouble no my child gave me three four hour stretches no my child wasn't a colic oh they took solids fine oh by six months they were sleeping 12 hours a night and giving me a two hour nap in the day i would just look at them and be like i'm so happy for you and inside i'd be like you freaking liar yo i do not believe you, you a scam a second you a scam it's like those moms there's this one mom that i used to follow and she was like Someone asked her in her q and like, do your kids ever have tantrums? And she's like, my kids have never had a tantrum. And I'm like, you lying. Lies. You lying. Okay. Lies. And I say this because it's just like every child does it. Not because it, you're bad at parenting. It's just the way they are. They test your boundaries. You like, nailed it. Right? Like what? What like what's gonna happen if you said yes? My child has. What would happen? What, what would happen? Would people say you're a bad mom because of it? This is the things that trigger me because yeah. I'm just like, let's not lie. Yeah. You know there have been so many moments, Aruj, where like my child has done my complete bestie. Same. Complete bestie in the middle of Costco. Okay, <laughs> like Costco, Walmart, you name it. I've been there. Okay. Same. Like there was a time when my child laid in the middle of a parking lot <laughs> i had to grab her and put her in the car and i oh sat there and had my own meltdown while she was having one at the back i hear like, you and you know i'm sure the parents were like look at this mother can't even handle her kids mm. and honestly sometimes you're just like it's just one of those days mm -hmm. it's just one of those goddamn days. yes and you know what sometimes i can't handle my kids sometimes i can't that's a real fact that's What's a real so fact that you're telling me your whole life you've been able to handle your own emotions right now let me see you handle your kids emotions absolutely like i don't even want to get into it because in my mind i'm like yo like the stress mm. you go through just being a mom and then dealing with other people's like stupid opinions nonsense no complete nonsense and sometimes it's even the opinions of like our like older generations oh, yeah which is like mm. why are you doing <laughs> like even the, the daycare thing that you but why would you do that mm. like why would you neglect your children mm. 
why would you neglect them but i'm not but you're not so you wanted me to go to school you wanted me to get an education Fox. you you said yeah i want you to be something big and have a career and then what do you want me to do with it you want me to throw that career in the garbage mm-hmm. you want me to throw because if you wanted that then why did i get a career mm-hmm. you know what i mean like it, make it make sense mm-hmm. make it make sense and also like you know how we always joke around about how the next generation is built different mm-hmm. we are also built different than the generation for before sure us. not to discredit anything because that generation is yeah like they're whoa, they are obviously built different yeah you know what i mean are, they are built but different. even for us we are not the generation to sit at home yeah we're not we really aren't we were not you know and some people will weigh the pros and cons co- mm-hmm. uh, pros and cons of feminism as well they exactly. say it took a toll on us and that this whole like feminine masculine energy yeah that it, it it's our generation that we were always taught to be more masculine in a sense probably because maybe it's it comes from a place where like our moms use that feminine energy and stayed at home and, and at there's home. regrets that they have yeah right and then everybody looked at that generation and said oh women aren't capable so then women we aren't felt capable. the need to prove them wrong that we are able to run a home and have a family and yeah to have we a can side do it business all. and we'll cook do and clean and have a career and go to school and do yeah. all these things right so that but that's not always great it's not right and so maybe the generation after us will adopt ways of our parents i would hope so but sometimes i do feel like is that gener like i would still say and again this is just my opinion i would still say that our generation is still very hard working super hard working like i think we we do it all yeah we really do but like is the generation after us going to be as hard working oh we don't know i wonder about that i don't because know I do, think, over. <laughs> I do think that like there is more just like our parents gave us a lot right mm-hmm. and uh, and then our generation is going to give our kids a lot and we're going to say we don't want them to go through the hardships that we went through so let's make their life easier but then how much of making their life easier is going to result in them not putting in the hard work because things are done for them it's true right it's true yeah it's like a- it's like no 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 no. we're gonna put you in 12 different extracurricular activities because we want you to be amazing at everything mm-hmm. okay or no 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 no. we're gonna put you in the best of the best schools because mm-hmm. you know you don't need to like have to work super hard as long as you're in a good school everything else is kind of taken mm-hmm. care of for you. you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying yep like that whole mentality that like we're gonna give you all the nice things mm-hmm. you need a phone we'll get your phone mm-hmm. numbers like there's so many things where you're like how much am i gonna do for you just so you don't have to go through hardship so that and and how much of that is going to make you feel like oh everything is given to me i don't have to put in the effort the yeah work. and it's a real i thing. worry about that it's a real thing it is a real thing and yeah. so i was saying that like even for our generation if we're so hard working how can anybody expect it that we are just gonna sit at home that's or true. not have a side business or, or not something. have something yeah, exactly for us you exactly. know what i mean exactly and i've said this before our the generation before us they literally sacrificed everything they did right 100 percent. and yeah. we have to say we are very grateful and very thankful yeah but i think for us we always want to be a bit more like showing our kids that we can also show self-love to us yeah the game yeah are we actually showing it yeah are we actually doing things to show mm-hmm. them that no you know what i'm gonna take 40 minutes and go work out yeah i'm gonna yeah. take care yeah, of myself yeah, yeah. yeah have you ever seen your parents work out hell no actually now a little bit not like workout workout it's like i'm going for a walk on the treadmill uh, the sad the sad the sad my the mom sad, the sad the sad has been happening yeah for a while right but then yeah. our kids are going to be like oh my mom has a gym membership yeah exactly my mom goes for runs exactly. outside my mom's learning boxing my yeah mom is doing yeah. taekwondo my yeah. mom is doing all these like there are so many more activities hot yoga you name it they're gonna yeah. be like wow my mom is actually doing all of these yeah things, exactly right exactly which will show them like we should be taking care of our bodies our mental health our physical health yeah we should watch what we're eating etc 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 yeah but don't you feel like we overdo it we definitely overdo it because i think look from my perspective it's like we overdo it because when we were growing up and this is not everyone but when we were growing up a lot of us were told that we have to do more for because real our parents did so much mm. so it's like you got to meet that standard and so because of that we became very hard on ourselves Mm -hmm. so we said let's take on more Mm -hmm. let's take on more to prove to them and everybody else that we can do everything Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so i feel like we we are also overstressing ourselves and maybe we're showing our kids that like this is how you overwork and overdo everything and maybe that's where some of that mom judgment comes from yeah because other moms are like well i'm doing 20 different things here so like why is she only doing two mm. i don't know if this is the case but i do feel like that yeah i feel like there's a lot of judgment for towards working moms but i 
I've also seen a lot of judgment towards moms that stay at home too. Yeah, it goes both ways. It goes both ways. And I say that because I feel like a lot of people, and I heard this on a recent podcast where one of the hosts was saying, let's just be real. A stay at home mom does not work as hard as a working mom. (gasps) Who said that? It was this girl on a podcast. Yo. I'll send you the podcast. And uh, I was just sitting there and I was just like, okay, so like I, I've stayed at home, mm-hmm. but I've, I've always had like my business on the side. Mm-hmm. However, I, I, I can say that I'm like mostly a stay at home mom, mm-hmm. right? So I have that perspective in a way. I can honestly say that like, oh, maybe I'm not fully because I still have my business on the side. So I'm still working on that. Mm-hmm. But regardless, I do think it's still hard to stay at home. It's so hard. It is very Who hard. That? Yeah, I don't know. I'm I just like, slip, slip, I'm like, slap, 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 Yeah. <laughs> but I think for me, it's like, you know, like, the great thing about working is that you get a chance to get away from your kids. For real. Don't get me wrong, though. I can 100% see that it's hard mm-hmm. because you have a lot of energy that you're exerting at work. Mm-hmm. You have deadlines. You have sales goals. You have whatever, whatever it is you're doing. If mm-hmm. you're a teacher, you're working with kids all day and then mm-hmm. you're coming home and working with your own damn kids. Like, it's very hard. Mm-hmm. But I also think that it's still, in a sense, a little bit of a mental break that you get from the mundaneness of your own mm-hmm. reality at home okay mm-hmm. and i actually have a friend who said to me that like i can't wait to go back to work like i'm freaking over my mat leave i want to go back to work because i like being able to get up in the morning go out grab my coffee dress up and go to work and mm-hmm. get me in a routine and i'm like i love that for you. yeah i love that for you and i can understand why it would feel good because you get your independence back in a way yes right but then the stay at home mom is like i'm gonna stay my ass at home I'm a cook and clean. Oh. <laughs> I got to still find activities to do with these kids. Mm-hmm. And I still have to be the best day at home mom I can be mm-hmm. slash homemaker mm-hmm. slash whatever else you're doing. And you don't get paid for it either. So, so you want to know something? Yeah. I found being at home extremely difficult. Mm-hmm. Extremely. And I said this before, around that five, six month mark, I was living in this Stir like crazy. hamster wheel. Yeah. And I was like, I'm doing the same thing the over, and over and over and over. The next day, especially yeah. during COVID. Yeah. I was going crazy. Like time was not even a thing. Like who was right? Right? track of anything absolutely at that point. and what made me really frustrated was like i i felt like when i was at home all of the home responsibilities fell on me yeah you know yeah, I, mean? I can not that. that it was explicitly said or pressured or talked about in the home but mm-hmm. i was like well arud you're home like you have to do the laundry you have to do you everything. have to cook everything exactly. and like especially during covid i was like i want to make all these new things all the time mm-hmm. make all this fresh stuff all the time yeah. i have to make sure that there's no button in the sink i have oh, to make sure yeah. that like the vacuum's up and running and like it was so so many tedious home tasks yeah, yeah. that were never ending yeah and i always felt like the responsibility was on me and mm-hmm. then when i had the kids on top of that all of their responsibilities were on me exactly exactly and then by the time that they would be in bed I would be like completely wiped out. Yeah. So now let me give you the contrast for my day now. Yeah. When I'm at work, it's super difficult. Look, don't get me wrong. I'm a teacher. Like we know, we know, I understand you're in a classroom with like four IEPs. You're in a classroom with an EA that you don't get along with. You're in a kindergarten classroom with an ECE you don't get along with. The staff meeting days. Who wants to stay late for that? You know what I mean? However, I do get my hour lunch. Yeah, exactly. Okay. exactly. I do get to warm it up and eat it in peace. Yeah. I do get to drive alone and put a podcast on or put some music on in yeah. the morning. Even if getting into my car and the morning was absolute chaos, chaos yeah. I get to have a minute to just drive away from it. Yeah, You know totally. what I mean? So all of that, and then I come home and then I give myself grace. Then I'm like, Arul, you don't need to have the dishes done. You can do it a bit later. I love that. Yeah. Thank you. You don't, okay, you know what? Whatever, Thank you didn't you. vacuum the carpet today. It's okay, we'll do it tomorrow. It's not yeah. a deal. Laundry's piling up. You got the weekend, no worries. Yeah. And then when you give yourself some grace, as tired as I am, at the end of the night, I'm like, it's okay. It's okay. That's that's the hard part. Mm-hmm. The giving yourself grace part. Because I feel like we don't do that. No, and especially if you're staying at home, you don't do that because you do feel yeah. like, this whole responsibility is now falling on my plate. Okay? Exactly. Like when my mom was a state, like she still is a stay at home yeah, mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She would literally make four or five different food items yeah. during the day, yeah. which means she's doing grocery for different yeah. food items during the day. And I, mind you, this never clicked in until I like right? was able it to never understand. Does. It never does. She would be going into like separate, because at that time we were in an apartment building and yeah. the laundry room was on a separate floor. Yeah. She'd be taking her change and going into those laundry rooms and doing everybody's laundry yeah. during the day. And like we would come home, the laundry is done. 
everything Every is done. Sibling has the food of their liking. Oh my god. Dad has food of his liking. Yeah. Mom has food of her liking. Yeah. It's like six different dishes yeah. in the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then everything is like packed up. Like lunches are packed for the next day. Dishes are done. She did all of this by okay, herself. See, see, I like you're saying that, and I'm like, that is literally my mom too. Literally. Like, and I think it's a lot of our moms. And where you're just like how the hell did they do this yeah but also it's also a lot of the stay-at-home moms now absolutely that's very true that's very true you you feel like you have to do all of it yes because you know the judgment that you get from other people Ooh. this could be judgment from your in-laws like what Girl, does she do be, what does she do anyway what does, what does she, she do, she do anyway she's at, she's at home no big deal no big this deal could also be judgment from your partner a judgment from i was just gonna say that because if they come home from mm -hmm. like their nine to five and they come home and there's laundry still and then it's like what did you do all day mm -hmm. what did you do all day yeah. and it's like why don't we switch roles mm, switch it up switch roles please and please. let me see if you found time to do the laundry yeah, like you got to go to work and interact with a colleague mm -hmm. okay yeah you know who i was interacting with this two-year-old right here mm -hmm. who felt the need to like pee on the carpet because mm -hmm. now we're potty training oh. hey. you know what i mean like yeah. it's just uh, everything when it comes down to it it's it is very hard i would say both positions are hard exactly you know uh, but i i have to say and maybe i'm biased because i was a stay-at-home mom is I don't get paid to be with stay at home mom. Like yeah, I would don't. love if somebody would be like, Hey, let me give you a paycheck real quick. Yeah. You know, because you're working like a million different yeah. jobs unpaid. But I, at the end of the day, honestly speaking, I have no judgment towards my friends or anyone that works. If you work, that is amazing. Good for you. Yeah. Why can't we just like be those moms that can just be happy for whatever other people are doing? Exactly. I was going to ask you, do you feel like, the mom judgment or the mom shaming has gone worse because of social media. Yeah, for sure. I feel yeah. like that. Yeah, I feel like that too. Like if you're not celebrating your kid's birthday a certain mm. way, we talked if about you that. Are yeah. Not you know like doing all of these things for Ramadan and Eid. You know, if you're not decorating your home with a certain aesthetic, if you're mm -hmm. not doing all these things and having all these gifts for your kids yeah. for Eid. Which, yeah. by the way, like I remember growing up with dollar dollar bills for Eid. <laughs> What's with these toys? What gift? What gift? I need the cash. Yeah. Cash I miss money, that. honey. I miss that. How come we don't do that anymore Yo, for our kids? Because our kids don't appreciate the cash. Okay? I know, but honestly, they appreciate the toys. We didn't really understand it either. I didn't understand but it either. Eventually, at a certain age, you were like, "Give me all the cash." Yeah, uh, I agree. But with you. they had to. Our parents had to set the trend. Yeah, they had to set the trend. You know what I, mean? I think we would be doing that. Like, I would still do that, but later on. Yeah, I like right now, I know. That. I think I. I think my children don't get that, but like when they will get that, hundred percent mm. easy for me. I don't Yo, have to. For real, I don't have to try. Yeah. <laughs> If you're not making like organic food in that little baby Brezza food thing, I don't even think I'm pro pronouncing it and properly. Those, like lunch, mm. lunch box, those bento boxes. I'm not going to lie. I used to be one of those mamas. Yeah. I used to be that. I got the little cutouts for the sandwiches. Yo, I, was I got the you. cutouts for the sound. I got the little picks. Mm. I got the little picks. You want, okay. Have you seen those moms? I don't know if you've seen the. So I was watching this video today. Okay? Yeah. There's this one mom and she is like mad props to her. Yeah. Okay. So she starts her video off and she's like, so my children wanted to have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and they've never had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich before. So I thought that I would make it for them. Girl started making her own damn bread. <laughs> started making her own damn bread. Stop this nonsense Not did right she now. Make the sourdough with the sourdough starter, y'all. Stop. She also went in and started taking fresh raspberries on, started making a raspberry jam. She she made a peanut butter at home. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm having trouble open up, opening up the craft peanut butter jar. Like, like. Listen, I'm, can we just normalize Wonder Bread right now? What, what? Right? I'm watching this video. Like, is she for real? Then I'm going back in her video, and she's like, "My husband wanted um, a cookies and cream ice cream, so I thought I'd make it for him." At no, home. Stop. she made the Oreos from scratch, sister. She made the Oreos from scratch. She put the icing in there. Then she made the ice cream from scratch. Okay, and I was like, "Yo." no wonder her husband loves her honestly like i get it i get it okay but, but yeah i don't have that energy yo are we moving in with her because I, I want some homemade oreos you. i would love to I it looks love. so good yeah y'all probably <laughs> follow her she has like over a million followers oh. okay She's, you need to set her promo. i will i'm just sitting there like this cannot no, be real she's a pioneer woman 2.0 oh my <laughs> god for real <laughs> Like making Yellow, her, right? Making her own cheese. Oh my gosh. Buffalo mozzarella at home. And I'm looking at there like, I'm having a hard time figuring out when to even drive to the grocery store to get my prepackaged cheese. Facts. Okay. A girl isn't 
we're not doing the cheese. No, no. We're not doing that. No. But then I also say, hey, we make our salon at home too. Okay? Yeah, we do. We do. It's from scratch. We do. We do. Okay. Like it's from scratch. The so rotis are from scratch too. Rotis are from scratch. Other than like we didn't piece the atta. Yeah. But like we did. She probably would. She probably would. <laughs> I'm like, is this gonna go into <laughs> rice paddy fields and like pick her rice? <laughs> she probably has a rice paddy field I'm in her backyard. Because honestly, like, I was like, I was impressed. That I was insane. impressed. And I sat there and I sent it to my sisters and I was like, I just want to know where she gets the energy. And y'all, she's prego. She's having her third baby. She's having her third baby. Does she live in a trailer? No. Okay, there's somebody else I think that I. There's can a use. lot of once you click. <laughs> That Instagram's like this is all she wants to see. Uh, that the algorithm's gonna work. Gonna... And I'm sitting there like, there are real people like this. They motivate me so much, but I will never be this way. No, I will I ain't never like be that. this way. But mad props to you because yeah, no, honestly, no, 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 no. I would sit with you in that kitchen and eat everything you made because it looks bomb. I know, it's but so the strange. satisfaction of eating like a Maggie noodle one night. Yo. Oh, come on, hits the spot. It really does. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna say the, it. I'm gonna the say it. Kanor, is it Kanor? The Kanor. Kanor the yeah. Jakarta. Ooh, mm. it's my favorite, favorite flavor of the Honest, noodles. Honestly, I just think like there are some moms out there that I look at. And I'm like, y'all are insanely mm. talented. I know. Organized. Mm. Everything is spot. But like you know, spot on. But you want to know something? I actually think every mom has qualities like that. You know what it is? Every mom just does it differently. Mo every mom does it differently mm -hmm. and not every mom shares it on Instagram. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Like, like you know, sometimes you, there was a time when you started sharing like your spice jars. Yeah. I loved it. Thank you. I loved it. But you know what I realized? Like when I go to my mom's house, yeah. As much as I look at it and I was like, oh my God, everything is like so unorganized. To her, it's her craft. It's organized. It's her craft. It's her craft. It is organized. So then I was like, Aruj, park the judgment. Because yeah, 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 yeah. whip up a storm in 40 minutes. Ain't that the truth? You said you said she made six meals and I'm sitting here like calculating in my head. Honestly, like the algebra is happening. I'm like, I would make six meals in like three days. Honestly, and you she know? would literally whip it up and that's it. So I was like, obviously she doesn't want no organized lace spice She labels. doesn't need it. She doesn't she need doesn't it. She doesn't need it. Like even now, the other day my mom came to my house and I'm like, okay, mom, I'm making like chicken salad and stuff. And she's like standing there and she's like watching me, obviously. Ooh, she's like, Shh. Well, you Yo, step up. my heart, my heart. Step up. <laughs> and then she's just like why are you doing it like this she's like this will be done in five minutes and i'm like what yeah and then she's like giving me the shortcuts mm. meanwhile i would be standing there like oh booning like the chicken boon, boon baby boon like oh my goodness like oh my god it is just uh, overwhelming how quickly they boon their food and you're Yo. standing there like what's going on <laughs> you know what i used to say when i was a kid i'd be like you know that i don't know it's that pakistani gamer where i'm like adrak lasan piaz kabooter <laughs> Yesu Banju, Yesu Banju Har Kabutar Doli. All the real ones know Yesu Banju, okay? So like, Yesu Banju. Because all my mom would need is like Adrak, adrak Lassan Piaz. 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 So I joke, I'd run out the kitchen. Tomato. 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 So I'm like tomato. Adrak Lassan Piaz Tomato. Oh, what is like Kabutar Doli? I just say Kabutar Doli at the end. And my mom would be like, yo, my daughter's <laughs> whack. Okay, but really, if you were on a desert island and they asked you, like, what three things would you need to make a meal? Like, that's Yo, solid. Honestly. Solid. Adrak, lasan, piaz, tomato. Piaz, for sure. Mm. Okay, you and, gotta have the garlic. And what's your fifth one? Like, a meat or something? A meat, yeah. yeah. That's it. Khalas, you're done. Yo, you're <laughs> done. You're done. <laughs> Damn. Also, like, you don't even need roti or anything for that. Just you eat don't. it with a spoon. You eat it with a spoon. Mm. Eat it with a spoon. So eat it with a spoon. So, so good. So good. But, yeah, they have their own tactics of being organized. It might not be aesthetic like ours, but, like, they are on it mm -hmm. they're on it mm -hmm. i give them credit yeah like honestly i can see how we would say oh my god like mom why is it like this is but at the end of the day like you're right we do have to park our judgment because the way they do things is i couldn't do things yeah, like i can't i can't like them getting ready for a dog is like yeah done it's done done, no, done. there's no anxiety uh -uh, there's no like I'm whatever prepping, like i'm on iron shelf you know? <laughs> Like, I'm, like, doing prep the night before. Desserts are happening the night before. Every, writing everything down. I swear to God. Okay? And my mom? It's all, all in here. here. It's, it's all, all in here. here. And, like, the way, like, I'm all, like, oh, the table setting and the chairs and whatever. Mom's, like, forget that. Just have good food and everybody come together around the table. Because the truth is, people just care about the food. They people just, just care eat. about the food. They just want to eat. They care about your little, you know, mason jar centerpiece yeah, at the end of the day. Yeah, but you want to know something, like, for me, it's, like, you got to have, I like. I get it, girl. And I know you I get, get it. it. I know you get it. Okay? Yes. But for them, it was just like, do what you got to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I love that. one time, my mom cooked this like massive patili of biryani, right? Yeah. So good. Everybody was so excited. We went to Niagara Falls and it was so, yo, everybody goes to Niagara Falls with a patili of like chaval, palau, biryani. Yes. Okay. Wonderland. Oh, <laughs> you know what we do? Oh my God. 
<laughs> we'd go to Wonderland and like we never wanted to eat food in the park because it was too expensive. So you sit so on that hill outside side of the parking lot. Everybody would find a spot, pop open trunks, you name it, pull up Yo. some chairs. Everybody eats your Core chocolate, memory bloody, Core korma, memory like you Rooney name rolls. it, roti rolls, parathe, shami kebabs. It's all there. Everybody <laughs> pet, bhar ke khalo. Go back, okay? Go on all the rides, and then 10 p.m. when the park closes, you get a funnel cake and you go home. I thought you were going to say, go on all the rides, throw all that no. up, and then you get the funnel cake. <laughs> it was the best that's a core memory it was the best but like when you were younger you were just like why do you have to be so embarrassed (laughs) i'd be like i don't (laughs) want to smell like darka like why yeah i just just be like i like i just want a ten dollar pizza pizza (laughs) slice (laughs) and now you're like now you're just like mommy can i get a 25 dollar pizza slice you're like sure of course you can i don't want you to live through the trauma that i went through (laughs) Or now I'm like, what the hell is wrong with me? Pizza pizza is gross. Yo, yes. not, only the pizza pizza garlic dip is good. The pizza, garlic y'all dip? need to step it up. Yeah, y'all need to step it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so not good. <laughs> so yeah, one time my mom made like this patili of biryani yeah. and we went to Niagara Falls and like there was literally, we only had plates. We yeah. had no utensils, no <laughs> nothing, okay? We drove all the way to Niagara Falls. It's so cold. <laughs> it's so cold in Niagara Falls, okay? Uh, you know what one of the uncles did? He took one of those foam plates. Yo! Okay. I, <laughs> every uncle he got to MacGyvering know. everything. Yo, they are so smart. Yo, he literally folds the foam plate in half. He okay? made a jump chop. He, he, he made a scoop and yeah, jump chop. And what did we do? We all ate the biryani with our hands. Yo, okay, but I'm gonna say something. Eating desi food with your hands. It's the only way to do it. It's the only way to do it. And okay? honestly, like, you know, it's kind of like you know when you get like chai in a matka? Yeah. Like, like, eat or like Ooh, in the, yeah, in the, the little clay, the clay the things. clay pots. Okay. So there, good. it really does change the it flavor of it. what you're it eating. It changes it. Yeah. That's how I feel about eating with our hands. Yeah. It's the same as when you get like those like steel cups where yes. you're like, yo, it's it's actually mm-hmm. like I think there's a science behind there it. There is. There is. Because it keeps your drink cold. Yeah. I love and like, it. There's always this, there's this theory about like you know when you go to Baskin Robbins or whatever you yeah. sh- you shouldn't use their little plastic spoons like come home and have it with a metal spoon. Ooh, because it tastes different. Exactly. Ooh. So there's definitely something with when we eat our with our hands. I feel yeah. like food just tastes better. Food tastes better. The experience. My mom used to. She still does. She'll still eat like some food with her hands. Like if she, sometimes she'll have dal chaval and she'll eat it with her hands. Yeah. And I'm just like, and sometimes I do it too, and I actually really like I it. I love it. I there's love just it. something about it. There is. I'm not gonna lie though. Sometimes getting those halli stains out of your fingers Yo. afterwards. <laughs> Yo, are you wearing gloves? No, <laughs> wearing... <laughs> eating gloves. <laughs> Yo, if I ever see you eating with your hands with gloves, I would never. I would risk it. I'd be like, shame. I would risk shame. Shut up, shame. shut up, Aggie. I would never do that. I can't do that. I can't shut do that. Kar yeah, literally. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love how we went off and we're like, so today we're going to talk about our uh, core memories from back in the day when we used to eat biryani from a patila with a styrofoam spoon. <laughs> Yo, man. Bring, bring it, it back, back in. <laughs> bring it back in. The topic was uh, mom shaming. <laughs> Yo, right. I cannot. It is what it is at it this is, point. Guys, no, you know the it. drill. You know the drill. You knew it was going to happen. This is why you're here. This is why every week Absolutely. when the episode drops, you're like, yes. She, they say one thing, but the topic really is never about the one Yo. thing. It's about some other stuff. We know. We know. <laughs> also, y'all, y'all minds work the same way. So. I know. I know. They're with us. We, They're with us yes. on this journey. They're with us on this journey. So do you have any mom judgment <clears throat> scenarios? Do you have anything that people have sent us? Do you have... um? Any funny Actually, quirky ones? I do have something that I wrote down. I'm going to ask you, okay? Okay. Is this going to be a girl chat? It's going to be a girl chat. Let's it's going to be a girl it. chat. Okay. Have you ever dropped your kids up to school mm-hmm. and met up with those, I call them PTA moms, mm. okay? The, the school moms mm. that are in everything. They're involved in every school thing. Mm. And then you're just the hands-off mom. Mm. And you just you just know that they're judging you because you're not really a part of that whole Crew. lifestyle dynamic. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's me. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> tell us your experience. So I am not uh, personally part of that yet. Yeah, I think yeah, my yeah. kids are just a bit young. Same. But I think in like the next two years, I will, will be. be part of this. Okay, so I, I, I try to be very involved. Like if my child has a field trip your girl's going oh, I love that. right uh, i'll do my best to go i try to always show up for her concerts and this and that but i'm not gonna lie to you like i am the no i don't need to converse with you at the end of the day mom facts same like, like you know i i roll up in there and mm. i'm like that's my child let's go home let's go i'm not like i need to huddle 
mm. and have like a collective chat if somebody comes up to me i'm so nice mm. but like i'm just not that way okay Girl, i'm, I'm just same. not that same. way mm -hmm. and it does not bother me yeah it doesn't it's bother crazy. me either and i also feel like you know there's like little emails that they send out okay guys getting together and, and i'm just like i'm so proud of you mm. you do that <laughs> okay and inside i'm like whatever you need i got you you need extra stuff i'll give it but yeah. like i just don't like being so like you know like i need to be really in it i think you can be involved in your own way it doesn't have to be mm -hmm. super crazy okay but also from a teacher's perspective <clears throat> yeah from a teacher's yo, perspective like, these pta moms are a little cliquey eh? yo i feel like that too i feel like that too yeah. and, and it's like realize. if you're not part of like the inner inner circle and you know there's a circle mm -hmm. so like now i've noticed that there definitely is a circle mm -hmm. which of course i'm not a part of and i don't want to be a part mm -hmm. of it mm -hmm. but like um sometimes i'm just like wow this is a lot it's, it's like lot. politics yeah it the is the politics of pta momming yeah it is and if you're not part of that inner nucleus the you, nucleus. You're, you're always gonna be revolving around like an electron okay <laughs> Ooh, i never thought i'd have to say nucleus, <laughs> after nucleus. Science. <laughs> here we are <laughs> <laughs> my science teacher would be like what did i tell you but you chose to not listen you chose <laughs> you chose not to pass that for real okay so what would you do like what's your what's your situation now like how are you i mean you're a teacher so like so with me like poppin'? when i go to pick up my kids i'm the same way i don't interact with other parents yeah i will interact with the like the ecs and stuff mm -hmm. whoever in the room i'll just be like hey what's up whatever and i stopped asking oh how was their day yeah yeah you know what i realized i feel like <gasps> when i do ask that they feel the need to always also give me something that the it's kids like need to work generic. on oh my god i feel like mine's her day was great. Oh, I had a great day. It was mm. very much like that. Mine are like, oh yeah, and like maybe you can also like remind them to da da da. And I was like, I don't want to hear. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah. it's actually something serious, then yeah. you'll talk to me on a different. Yeah, day. Absolutely. you know what I mean. Love that. So I just don't really like interact. I just pick them up, and we just get ready to go. And like I walk out or whatever. But there are some moms who will be like, oh, like let's exchange numbers and have a play date and da 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 da. And like, mind you, guys, like my kids are not friends with their kids. Yeah, this totes. is the problem. Yeah, and like I am not at a point to be friends with my my kids friends oh moms. my god honestly I'm, sorry. I'm so sorry you know i i do have um like maybe one or two friends of my kids who are friends moms mm -hmm. right and and we've talked and mm -hmm. stuff and they're really nice and i'm honestly i'm, I'm never rude to anybody mm -hmm. I'm, I'm super nice i will if you want to have a play date by all means mm -hmm. it's all good but i'm also not the like i have to overly plan play date no. all the time like i'm not like that yeah i'm not like that yeah i'm good with you. you see each other at school you're living your life having a great time that's great yeah i also like <clears throat> like i've said before i don't celebrate my kids birthdays like yeah. i don't do big parties and stuff we'll do a small thing maybe with family this that yeah. whatever um so that's also why i don't feel the need to like invite the friends yeah, and stuff you know sense. like it makes sense if you do a birthday party and you're like okay i'm gonna invite, I'm gonna invite my the kids class. Yeah, yeah 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 makes sense to me but like i guess that's also why i just i don't i'm not in that world yet mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um so we'll see when maybe he's in like grade one or whatever yeah, the totally, older we'll totally. see but right now i'm not in that but yeah, yeah even from like a teacher's perspective sometimes these pta moms this parent teacher council like <clears throat> it can get a little out of hand okay and i feel like they tend to like they take everything very seriously oh my god okay? this is like the it's like the elections of Yo! like the world the world elections are happening yeah how dare you not do like, this in elementary they school also find everything <laughs> offensive like the whatever whatever the teacher is doing how dare you whatever the school is oh doing, how dare they whatever. and it's like everybody just calm yeah why why are you yeah. so just take a chill pill just relax relax and like we also other parents and like the school community we appreciate your efforts but tone it down a bit tone it down a lot right? bit what is a little bit of Hansa? take a chill pill take a chill pill take a chill pill take a chill pill okay mm -hmm. another one that i have for you let's Ooh. go okay okay you just had your baby all right hey a girl is struggling mm. she just spent the night crying because her baby ain't going to sleep mm -hmm. your husband says to you hey why don't you go have a girl's date okay hey, you need to get out one of your other moms had a kid you guys can like you know cool sit and chill this mom says to you oh my god like after you tell her your story oh my god exactly simply like like your story mm -hmm. oh my god yeah you had a c-section like i completely bounced back after like i was totally fine like i was really fine like maybe you just need to like you know <laughs> maybe you just need to like seek some therapy or like maybe you just need a little bit of help how do you deal with that okay what would you do oh my god you I'm, know what i'm the friend you're the I friend you, you said that to me i say <clears throat> oh my god aruj i'm so sorry you're struggling but like no it wasn't that bad for me like do you feel like you need to like go get some help or something mm. because 
honest like what are you doing like have you have you been like eating your panjiti oh my god <laughs> have you been um have you been like breastfeeding or are you like formula feeding Yo, guys i'm getting triggered <laughs> i don't like oh my god you're formula feeding uh oh wow oh yo that's a big mom a judgment. big mom judgment but you want to know something <clears throat> sorry to interrupt i feel like there's been moments in my life where i've even been judgy like that mm -hmm, i can mm -hmm, honestly say mm -hmm, i can say mm -hmm. and the reason i i think maybe it's something that's ingrained into us is because our parents have told us that if you breastfeed your kid, mm -hmm. it's better. Mm -hmm. Which there, of course, there are great things to it benefits. Of course. To, right? But I think I've approached certain situations where I felt like I would say like, oh, but like I want my kid to be smart. So like I want to, yep. I want to breastfeed. Yeah. However, it's also self-reflection <laughs> and realizing it's not about that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And realizing that like, listen, every freaking mom is doing the best they yeah. can. Now you answer the scenario. So honestly, because breastfeeding was so hard, like if I opted to do formula feeding, yeah. I'd just be like, listen, breastfeeding was too hard for me. Yeah, totally. I just couldn't do it. Yeah. I gave it for as long as I could. Yeah. And then I decided to, and I'm like, and then I would just say, eventually the kid is going to be on solid. Yeah. So it's all yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But I know that in the moment, I feel like I would only have the courage to say that after my first like oh, if i'm on my second and third kid because then you have the first, experience yeah for my first i feel like i'd be like give me all that yeah i was like that too. yeah because i'd be like oh my god you didn't struggle yeah. hey now what did you do i i was that yeah way. i was that way too because and after my first i was like whoever is telling me that they're not struggling if, yeah. if you're saying breastfeeding was so easy and it was this yeah, beautiful yeah. moment in your life what did you do share mm -hmm. with me because i am struggling i am really struggling right yeah mm -hmm. but then after that at, when i had my second and third i found my voice and my courage to be like no 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 yeah you yeah, know yeah. What yeah. i mean Let i'm gonna do, do what, what i gotta, gotta do. do yeah but for the first one if i'm being completely honest i would have been like give me all the tips i was the same mm -hmm. i was the same because you also you're like i'm a newbie I'm a i don't newbie. know this you're seasoned what am i getting into yet you know more than i do yeah and they throw out all the tips yeah, and your sometimes kid they're is just like, like a year two years older than mine like yeah. what do i do what did yeah. you do at this age how many hours did your kids sleep but then now you're like they probably don't even freaking remember exactly like for real yeah. unless it was a trauma they probably don't even remember and this is the thing if we go back to the first thing that i asked you in the beginning of this episode yeah. where you have a mom who literally acts like they had no struggles at the beginning oh my God, of their such a lie. it is such a lie it's such a goddamn lie okay? and you know what i'm realizing now if i really deep it right now i feel like it's you or like or not just yeah, you yeah. directly but that mom showing off a hundred percent and feeling like, better that me. like oh in the back of my mind that mom knows that she struggled too but you yeah. know what? i'm gonna feel better in this moment by making you feel terrible yeah you know yeah. what i mean yeah yes and then yes. you get the little like I'm gonna brush my shoulder off and give you all the advice. Or, or the moms that are like, I just had a baby. I'm I'm rolling through town with my stroller mm. and like my new dress, looking great. Mm. Which kudos to you for looking great yeah. and you had the energy to do that. But like, if you had the energy, doesn't mean other moms did. And Honestly, like, let's just let's just be a little mindful of that. Yeah. You know. Also, like, please do not dismiss somebody else's journey. Yeah like that is a big thing i feel like people don't think about it that way and yeah. like, that's where all the judgment plays in like oh you had an epidural oh yeah. you had a c-section yeah. so you kind of like opted out for the easy way yeah. didn't you? you know what i mean and it's like don't do that don't do their that. birth the journey and their postpartum is completely different from yours absolutely you yeah. had you weren't in the room you weren't in the room you don't know what they went through and it's also like you know like maybe you 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 bounce right back yeah you know maybe you just have that body composition where it's like you know i got great genes and i can bounce back right after and i didn't i didn't gain weight and i i had the luxury of having a personal trainer throughout my you know mm -hmm. like pregnancy then you have somebody that maybe is struggling with that yeah like why can't we just lift other people up mm -hmm. why do we have to tear people down i wish i had those like, jeans honestly i wish i had those jeans too god sometimes when i look back at my photos 200 I was like, pounds a girl oh, was 200 pounds same here and, and you don't even know how nasty you feel mm -hmm. like the feeling is horrible okay Aside from all that all the <clears throat> sweating all the smells everything everything the hair loss okay the and bleeding you, everything for real like you it's the you hormones feel, you're crying over things that are like oh my god i my egg is not boiled i okay. oh, i remember like there would be times where i would go to bed and wake up the next morning in a full sweat me too yo like sweat down my back full Cause, sweat because that's how that's what happens yeah and like mind you like i just showered before getting yeah, into bed exactly and it would be just like 
sweat city yeah and then leaking boobs oh my god you're just like smelling and you're like i just showered like how come i smell so bad and then it's like the you know every day is the same we've talked about this where every day is the same and and then you go on your social media and you see all these moms who just had their baby and they're out and about and they're like going on vacation doing this and and you feel miserable Mm -hmm. and then you have a friend that makes you feel even more (sighs) shit Yeah, come don't on, do that. guys. Come on. Don't do that. Don't be that way. Don't be that friend. Okay, let me give you a scenario. Okay. So what do you do if you have a friend who judges you on co-sleeping? Well, I co-sleep. So, so let's say I'm sitting here being like, hey, no, but why? Why are you co-sleeping? Okay, see, it would be the same scenario as if somebody had told me this with my first child. Mm-hmm. Actually, hold on, because I did co-sleep with my first child. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I have to say, it did not bother me. Okay. It didn't bother Good. me because for me, and first of all, okay, I just want to say, I know there's like dangers to it, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. And she had her own bassinet, but then there was times when I was like, I am dying mm-hmm. and I don't have the energy to do this. And sometimes you just co-sleep with them, okay? So in those moments, I did what I needed to do mm-hmm. and I feel like I was okay with it. Mm-hmm. And I also think like, I don't think I heard that from a lot of people, Good. so I can't really gauge, but I do think that there was like, my sister's sleep train and they did great and I did not sleep train mm-hmm. my first daughter or my first daughter, mm-hmm. my only daughter. <laughs> I didn't sleep train her. And I do feel like I not judgment but it was like oh my god why don't you sleep train mm-hmm. and i was like yeah like i should i mm-hmm. should sleep train um but i just didn't do it mm-hmm. and i don't think i felt judged by it but i think um with the first because you're so new at it yeah i can see how that could affect you in a like you know it, it could affect you more emotionally yeah. yeah like it emotionally would take a bigger toll on you because i think you are not seasoned yeah and you don't know how to stand up for yourself Yo, for real i'm yeah. i really do feel that way i feel like if i really reflect on it and if anybody <clears throat> said anything to me during after i had my first i'd be like oh my god just give me all the tips yes like you're right yeah, i am struggling exactly. oh my god your kids slept so like my biggest my biggest experience with judgment was the fact that my kids wouldn't nap Oh. like i would even take them somewhere and they would give me such a hard time during the day and like other p- people would be like but why isn't your kid just napping and yeah I'm like, bro i wish i knew yeah I wish I knew why my kid was like napping. every child is different you know what i mean yeah like let's not like you know you you know when you take your child to the doctor and they're like oh well he's meeting all his milestones and like sometimes your kids are just not the same every yeah. child is different yeah. and like my kids never they were kind of on the lower end of a lot yeah. of the, yeah, you yeah, know yeah, that yeah. like chart yeah they yeah, were yeah. they were sometimes in the 50 percentile but yeah. they would also they were also especially my young he was really because he was born so such a preemie, yeah, right? yeah so he was very like he's under he was a yeah. lot, like in terms of all of that so it's just like i felt so like i just be like i don't know why they're not napping absolutely all three of them, all yeah three, oh my one god thing that's been the same and consistent is the fact that they were not good nappers yeah and i think you know? people are just like well that doesn't make sense because yeah. your child's supposed to nap exactly like, what are you doing wrong yeah what are you doing wrong what are you doing wrong yeah yeah and it's always they're like it's the seasoned moms jo- uh, like judging the non-seasoned yeah. moms and now i feel like when i meet other seasoned moms like really seasoned moms okay yeah. who are still stay-at-home moms let's yeah. just say yeah. let's just say your kid is like yeah. in grade six now yeah, totally. okay they're older you've got like two three kids they're much older and you're kind of like one of them i I had this experience where i had a seasoned mom whose kids are much older and she came to me asking for like career advice and she was like oh i'm thinking of doing like the ece course and i was like that's great i was like there's a huge demand for ece so i would really recommend doing it it's great and she was like yeah and she looks at me she's like you know how what what are you like how is teaching in this that whatever and i was like well i've taken a break from teaching because i'm doing my master's and let me tell you how she looked at me with this like look of disgust what? like why aren't you handling your kids at home what do you mean you're back in school why would you do that now why didn't you wait until they're much older like me like now that my kids are older i can go back to school I and make sense mentality, though honestly and then i just it's but like a, you know what yeah. in my mind i feel like if i self-reflect i feel like maybe maybe she did that because maybe it i came across as oh look at you you're just deciding to go back to school now yeah oh that could be you it. never know right you never know like, yeah i can also we can okay. also be in the wrong see see that's growth that's because growth that's growth because you said whoa 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 whoa, whoa. i could be the judging mm-hmm. mom but i'm gonna try and look at it from her perspective yeah kudos to you i try I y'all try. i love that i'm not gonna in the moment when she gave me that look i was like girl yeah 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 sit your butt back down i agree i agree i agree with you i agree with you you have every right to feel that way i have a scenario for you yes what about the moms that you when you just had a baby okay Mm -hmm. let's say your kid is like six months okay and you're you're you know your other mom friends are going out all the time Mm -hmm. having a good time you know some of them are taking their kids out they're bringing the baby with them and you 
just feel a lot of anxiety taking your kid oh. out. So it's just like, I'm, I don't want to take them out because yeah. like, if they start crying, it, I'm going to be very like flustered. Mm-hmm. But they are just like, just bring, just bring him. Like, it's fine. Just come out. Like, we all have kids. Just come. Mm-hmm. What do you do in that scenario? So I have been in scenarios like that and yeah. I've said no. See, I've been in scenarios like that and too. And did you go? I feel like I did go initially. Yeah. And there, okay, so there were times where I feel like with my first baby it i was i had a lot of anxiety taking mm-hmm. her out because i was just like how am i gonna manage it's just gonna be me and i'm feeding her and i need like my cover and mm. this and that and like sometimes they don't have like um change rooms for the kids and stuff so it was a lot of that mm-hmm. but i also realized that like i was at home all the time and i needed to get out yeah i get that so too. i think if anything at times i felt like it was helpful for me to mm-hmm. leave but um there were also times when i was just like you don't understand mm. you are not in my head mm-hmm. like i'm really struggling and i can't expressed to you because for you it seems like it worked out that's mm-hmm. great but for me it didn't mm-hmm. and so there were some times when i would say yes and then there were some times when a girl was just in her feelings and she was like i'm not going yeah there have yeah. been many many times where i've actually said no yeah like i was like i can't come out i'm sorry i'm busy or whatever yeah. and like the the truth of the matter is i never told them that i'm not coming out because i have anxiety bringing the baby of course not. i would never admit it you can't I'd be like hey i can't i'm busy that no, day because then they then they come up with a well, if you have anxiety, like this is a great opportunity for you to leave your house. And sometimes, honestly, that's not the right thing to say. It's not. It's not. This is the thing too. Like, I feel like as much as you want to try and, and I get it too, because from a friend's perspective, you want to try and push your friend and be like, come out. Yeah. You know, but if you, if a friend, I think in this moment, if I think about this, if, if you say to me, Hey, I'm actually having a bit of anxiety yeah. bringing like my kids out. So I'll meet you another time. Yeah. Maybe if I am able to, I come and see you. Yeah. That's a good idea. Right. But then also it's like, as a friend who's on the other side of it, who's like, is she going to be comfortable with me coming to her house? Yeah. You know what I mean? You also have to like, there's a lot of, there's a lot. You kind of have to, but, but then it goes back to the thing that like, if you are going through something like mm-hmm. this, you have to verbally talk to people and tell them what you need from mm-hmm. them you know what i mean because mm-hmm. i think that then it makes more sense that like hey i would love it if you would come mm-hmm. over or like instead of going out can we just like can i just come to your place because i felt like when i had kids i felt way more comfortable going to one of my friends places i had kids because mm-hmm. i knew she had everything, everything i needed if i needed to go upstairs and just have a moment to myself I knew I could do that. Exactly. Whereas and like at a restaurant. Like a massive bed, for example, for you to just like Aram say feed. Yeah. No judgment, no nothing. Exactly. If you know, there have been times where I used to go to other friends' ho- homes and like I would just put my kids in their kids' cribs. Absolutely. Just and for naps or whatever. And sometimes you gotta do that. Yeah. And right? it worked out great. And I'd come out and I'd come downstairs and I'd be like, yo, let's eat. My kids napping. Yeah, because if you you're know? at a restaurant, they're bring the food, your child's crying, oh, you're sitting in a booth. So hard. Like this? Oh. And, and the truth is up to here, right? You're trying to feed your kid, so half your child is on the table, like legs Hitting are dangling. <laughs> it's it's rough. How are you eating? Yeah, like it's it's really hard. I think a lot of it stems from that. So I think ultimately, like you know, just give your give give each other grace, guys. Mm-hmm. Like let's not be those let's not be those judgy moms. I also have to say uh after a mom gives birth like don't think that you know what she's going through oh my god 100 percent. because sometimes i feel like and there are extreme cases too come on we know about postpartum yeah maybe we experience baby blues yeah yeah but maybe we haven't really experienced post yeah part of yeah. depression like the real, real, yeah. real ones, you know like the ones where moms don't bond with the baby yeah or like since we're talking about this right i actually wanted to bring something up too mm-hmm. where like there are times and i don't know if this is like something that every mom has felt but there's times when you also feel like i had this kid but am i equipped to take care of this kid of right now? of course yo those thoughts go through your mind am i equipped or like i am not a good enough mom mm-hmm. like this child deserves better than me mm-hmm. you know what i mean sometimes it's not even the guilt from outside it's the mom shaming you do to yourself within yeah i love because that. you are like I I don't know why I don't have the capacity to be this amazing mom today mm-hmm. and I am losing my shit on my kids today and I'm yelling and I'm like raising my voice mm-hmm. and why am I like this why couldn't I be better look at this person they don't mm-hmm. ever do that first of all everybody yells at their kids mm-hmm. let's not pretend mm-hmm. don't tell me you're using that gentle parenting voice 24 hours a day don't tell me you're that. not we know don't it tell me that don't tell me you guys don't give your kids the look mm. every mom's got the look and let me tell you that look comes in clutch mm. but i i think that's a big one where sometimes you feel like i don't know if i am mentally equipped 
to be a mom. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when you like, like, let's say you just had your first. Yeah. Your first is like two weeks. Yeah. Okay? You're just, you're just coming out of your senses of like, holy, I just gave birth. Okay. And how and but you are really going through real post so like i've read scenarios of like moms not bonding with their kids yeah moms like not getting up at night to want to feed their kids yep. moms being like i didn't even want to have this kid <sighs> yeah. and those are real questions and these are real issues so at instead of being like oh but you haven't changed the kid's diaper yet oh yeah. you're not getting up to feed you're not yeah. doing all these things give that mom some grace you yeah. do not know what's going you on inside know. of their heads and like you know, I remember, have you watched the TV show called The Maid? Oh, no, but I've heard about it. So it was like a limited series on Netflix. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. Yeah. And it's about a mom and her journey and all these things. And there, but she experiences turmoil in her oh depression. Oh okay? Yeah. And there was an episode where they actually tried to show, visualize. Yeah. Like visually what depression might look like. Wow. And what it was, was she would be on the couch and they would show her lying on the couch and they would yeah. show her whole life revolving around her. Oh my God. And like hours would pass by. But she, and then they would switch the scene where she would be in this dark black hole. Oh my and God. she would be like looking up yeah. to her life passing by. It's like if you're trapped in a well. Oh my God. Do you understand? <gasps> and it's like, you know, de- real postpartum yeah. depression is that. Yeah. So it's like, as much as you're saying things to this mom, being like, snap out of it. Or yeah, yelling it doesn't at her, work even, that way. Even if you're not yelling, even if you're not saying snap yeah. out of it, even yeah. if you're, but even if you're just like, are you okay? Do you need yeah. anything? What can I do for you? That mom might not even be able to vocalize yeah, that's what true. they need that's from so you. True. That's so true. And this can happen not just postpartum depression, but any forms of depression. Oh, I think so too. We all know it's a spectrum. Yeah. But I think at the end of the day, the judgy comments, the looks, the judgment on their birth, how they're feeding, what yeah. they're feeding, when they're feeding, who's feeding. Yeah. All of that, like they're, everybody should understand that all moms have their own journey yeah and like everyone has their own way of doing it so like let them do it what they want to do exactly unless you're seeing like actual abuse guys Mm -hmm. that's different Mm -hmm. you know what i mean but Mm -hmm. like majority of parents are like they're they're trying their best Mm -hmm. they're trying their best to navigate motherhood and it is it is hard it It is is so so hard hard. and those feelings that you have of like not being able to bond with your baby or maybe you know like they, they always say like as soon as you have your baby and they put him in your arms and you just have this feeling and it's like all the lights are shining down on you and like you know what i'm ta- talking about and some moms don't have that no, okay they don't. some moms don't have that like with 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 my son asher when i had a, i didn't get to experience that because a girl had a hemorrhage mm-hmm. okay you think i didn't want to experience it of course i did mm-hmm. but like i wasn't even in my senses mm-hmm. but you, you like not even for me because i think i was fine but i think even the internal mom guilt of mm-hmm. sometimes admitting that i I'm not feeling a connection. Yeah. I am not. Why am I feeling this postpartum like baby blues? Yes. Even vocalizing that Mm -hmm. because sometimes you don't even know that that's what it is. Exactly. So you're like, I don't know why I'm crying. I don't know why I'm sad. Exactly. I'm just sad. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to explain it. Mm -hmm. And when you vocalize it, you are putting yourself in a spot where other people are going to judge you and you're being vulnerable. Yep. So like, that's also hard because some people, a lot of people, I would say, don't want to share that. Exactly. Even now, I think now that we're, I'm past that phase now, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I talk to some of my friends and they're like, yeah, like we went through this and Mm -hmm. it was really hard. But in the moment, you can't outwardly say it. Exactly. Because it's almost like, like you're ashamed to say that, like, uh, maybe I don't have the bond that I wish I wanted. Yeah. And you're worried about the mom judgment. You're worried about the mom judgment. And then sometimes it's also like, it's not even the bond, but sometimes you're just like, why did I do this? Mm-hmm. I miss my old life. Mm-hmm. Like, let's be real. Oh, you that really miss your old life. Oh, every mom misses their old life. The transition is so hard. It's not to say that you're not grateful, right? Because mm-hmm. there's always this thing of like, be grateful, be grateful, be grateful. So many people have it worse. So many people have it worse. You Like, this is drilled into everyone. Mm-hmm. Always be grateful. Always mm-hmm. thank God. Da, 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 right? But then in those moments, you're it's literally like a life altering moment. Mm-hmm. Okay. You literally went from you being you and not having to care about anybody. And now it's like your whole life is in that person. Exactly. And so the way your world shifts mm-hmm. and it's like, you can't even vocalize that. I miss my own mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. I miss being able to just do things carefree mm-hmm. and I'll never, ever get it back. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. 
that is rough it's so rough it's you rough nailed it girl yeah it's hard and every mom feels that way yeah don't tell me you don't miss your old life oh you, there's so many parts of it oh, that you miss it's so not to say many. that you don't love your children you no, do you're not They're we're not discounting absolutely. your love and affection yeah. for the human being that you created yeah totally no we are, but we are saying that motherhood is so difficult and you do look back and you're like remember when i could just put my jacket on and get in the car what does that even feel like what does that even feel like what is this yeah. what is this uh alternate reality you're speaking honestly of? sometimes i look back at my photos and i was like oh my god my hair used to be gorgeous it's literally like yadding you know like you're just like it's like the best yeah and it's like the best <laughs> memories too because you're just like i miss that version of me she was so carefree mm -hmm. she had so much fun and like she was also maybe like even when it comes to like a career you're like i had so many aspirations mm -hmm. and like this and that and now i just feel like all of my energy and time i devote to these children because i don't want to let them down yeah but like internally you're like but am i letting myself mm -hmm. down fox you know what i'm saying so mm -hmm. there's a lot that go there's a lot of things that people process in their minds that they can't even vocalize exactly. i think i think the main thing that we wanted to get out is just that it happens a lot mm -hmm. you know it's like if you're scrolling you see a mom like doing some funny things with her kid and posting a prank on instagram y'all take it as a prank and a joke it's a joke it's not serious <laughs> like some people are really proud that mom lost her nights for that kid yeah, for real exactly she's just having a little fun she's having a little fun let's just like you know just not be those judgy karen moms <laughs> let's do better also, guys fat is best let's stop fat this is freaking best. stop this formula breastfeeding stop with that oh my god my child only eats organic i'm so Just happy stop. for you okay like you want to know something this is my teacher two cents when there is a classroom of 28 kids do yeah. you think a teacher knows who was breastfed nah do you, you think a teacher knows whose lunch is organics or who's having craft dinner ain't that the truth no. okay you do what you gotta do to survive we know it's hard what's good all right guys this she is gonna it. be the end of the episode the end of the episode but honestly speaking it was a great episode so mm. our question to you is actually it's going to be a little bit of a longer question mm -hmm. but share one of your mom shaming scenarios we're going to post it on our instagram mm -hmm. it's linked below please make sure you guys follow us subscribe to our channel make sure you guys give us that five stars on spotify and we will see you guys next time bye